One of the most famous female figures in history is the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette. Who was Marie Antoinette, a literary figure, actually? Were the rumors about her true? Did the Queen, who was notorious for her extravagance during France's worst financial years, really said that if there is no bread, let them eat cake? In this video, we will examine the most famous French queen in history, Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette was born on November 2, 1755, at the Hofburg Palace in Vienna, as the 15th child of Empress Maria Theresa of Austria. Marie Antoinette is the youngest daughter of Empress Maria Theresa of Austria. The image of his mother is above all that of a political leader. Maria Theresa gave birth to many children for the continuation and growth of the dynasty. The Empress, who gave birth to 16 children in 20 years, named her Antony when she gave birth to her last daughter. Immediately after, he continues to examine his files as much as his pain allows. He even takes his rotten tooth out, taking advantage of his pains. The Empress' biggest passion in life is politics. In addition, the Empress is a devout Catholic and she rules her country according to these Catholic rules. Maria Theresa does not tolerate even the slightest spoilage in any form. He is a political monster, as the Austrian writer Stefan Zweig puts it. His people and ministers fear Maria Theresa to death, and their children will suffer from this fear. The biggest aim of the Empress is to ensure that her children come to important positions in European politics. Archduchess Antonia grew up in her mother's very strict moral palace. She cared about her children's education so that they could successfully pursue their political careers, but she could not take care of her children personally due to her busy schedule. That's why the future Queen of France was spending her time playing and dancing. In addition, the princess, who enjoyed her music lessons very much, learned to play various musical instruments. Allegedly, Maria Antonia and composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart had met when they were still children. Young Mozart asked the Empress what he wanted as a reward after a concert he gave to the royal family, and jokingly asked for his daughter, Marie Antoinette. The future Queen of France is actually the insurance of an ordinary marriage alliance that has been practiced since the Middle Ages. Princes and princesses are obliged to serve the interests of their respective kingdoms. Already in the French monarchy, traditionally, the queens are foreigners. There has been hostility between the Austro-Hungarian Empire and France for more than 200 years. Austria and France, who were allies in the Seven Years' War that started in 1756 and lasted until 1763, decided to marry Louis Auguste, the grandson and heir apparent of Louis XV, and one of the daughters of the Austrian Empress Maria Theresa, for the continuity of this alliance. When her two older sisters died of smallpox, Maria Antonia, who was only 14 years old, got engaged to the future Louis XVI. For this reason, Maria Theresa subjects her daughter to accelerated training to become a French queen. At that time, princesses who married a French prince were called Dauphin. Maria Theresa wanted to send her daughter to the Palace of Versailles as a French princess. For this, a marriage ceremony was held on April 19, 1770, in which Louis Auguste did not attend. His son-in-law was represented by Marie Antoinette's brother Maximilian. The French maiden left Vienna two days after the wedding and set out. King Louis XV and the royal family welcomed him at the Palace of Versailles. On the same day, they got married with a magnificent wedding in the royal chapel. But it would soon become clear that Louis Auguste had sexual problems. For this reason, the couple could not be together for several years. For Marie Antoinette, the first years at the Palace of Versailles were years of utter agony. She could not get pregnant. Every year that she couldn't get pregnant, rumors were spreading about the young couple. Rumors that the crown prince was impotent or that the marriage was a sham marriage were making Antoinette's life more unbearable day by day. In a letter he sent to his mother, Maria Theresa, the young woman complained to her mother that to give birth to a dead child is a much better situation than not giving birth at all in my situation. The young bride was also incurring the wrath of Madame du Barry, mistress of King Louis XV. 
Madame du Barry was a high society prostitute. For this reason, Antoinette did not see him as her equal. Apart from that, the princess' daily life was very boring. Every day he got out of bed with the help of the butlers and was dressed by the servants. From this situation, he told his mother, I'm putting on my lipstick in front of the whole world, I'm washing my hands in front of the whole world he complained. On May 10, 1774, King 15. Louis died suddenly of smallpox. The lives of Louis Auguste and Marie Antoinette changed completely. The people of the palace competed with each other to offer their allegiance to King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette. The new king and queen knelt down and prayed to the god. According to one claim, Louis said, Lord God, guide us and protect us. We are too young to rule the country. The queen was 19 and the king 20. 16. Louis's coronation took place in Reims at the height of the bread famine in Paris. The phrase let them eat cake if they can't find bread was attributed to Marie Antoinette, either to discredit Marie Antoinette or to make the word popular. There is no evidence that it was said by her. She took note her dairy, as I see these people who treat us so well despite their own misfortunes, I think we should definitely work harder for their happiness. The king sees this fact too. Speaking for myself, I will never forget the day I was crowned. But after her coronation, Marie Antoinette's life started to get boring. France supported the American War of Independence. This situation caused very serious financial problems for France. Financial problems caused the people to become poorer and poorer. So the palace had to implement very serious austerity policies, but this was not done. Antoinette often throws expensive parties. Gambling addiction was on the rise. Also, Antoinette was very fond of clothes and jewelry. The queen never understood the true value of money, so she bought jewelry at exorbitant prices. On her 21st birthday, she threw a gambling party that lasted three days and three nights. During this time, there was no limit to the money that changed hands. All this had a very bad effect on the queen's position among the people. As if the unrest she had caused in Versailles was not enough, she began to appoint her sincere friends to positions and positions belonging to others. For example, he appointed Therese de Lamballe as inspector of the royal court officials. However, there were other aristocrats who were more suitable to be appointed to this post. Normally, in France of the time, there was a castle called the Petit Trianon, where the mistresses of the king stayed. Louis XVI dedicated that palace to Marie Antoinette at the queen's request. This incident sparked rumors that the queen was actually a mistress. Antoinette, who spent most of her time in this palace, spent an enormous fortune on the decoration of the palace. The rumors were incessant. There were some newspapers showing the queen cheating on the king with Count Artois. Other newspapers claimed that the queen had sex with animals and was a lesbian. The queen's popularity was eroding day by day. Holy Roman Emperor Joseph II visited his sister, Marie Antoinette, in April 1777. The Austrians were concerned that Marie Antoinette could not have a son, and the emperor had come to check with his own eyes how his sister's marriage was going. They took a long stroll alone in the garden of the Petit Trianon castle. Her brother criticized Marie Antoinette for her gambling addiction and ineptness in choosing friends. Emperor Joseph, 16. He also had a deep conversation with Louis about his sexual problems. Although it is not known exactly what she said during this conversation, it was certain that it worked, because in April 1778 the Queen announced that she was pregnant. Marie Antoinette's first child was born at the Palace of Versailles on December 19, 1778. She fainted repeatedly from pain and embarrassment during the birth, which took place before the eyes of hundreds of courtiers. This practice was not repeated in her subsequent births, as she strongly opposed giving birth in public. Her first child was a girl and was christened Marie Therese Charlotte. Although the palace and the public wanted boys, Marie Antoinette was delighted to have a girl. He said to the baby, if you were a man you would belong to the state, but you belong to me and you will have all my care, you will share my happiness and lessen my pain. In the following years, the crown princess was followed by three siblings, Prince Louis Joseph, Louis Charles and Sophie Beatrix. 
the queen became less extravagant as she got older. She was now dressing more simply and was not adding new jewelry to her collection. But in 1786, she had a private artificial village built on Versailles lands. It all started in 1789, when King Louis XVI convened the class assembly to discuss the problems. This assembly was last convened by Louis XIII in 1614. From its earliest days, the assembly called for reform and criticized the monarchy. As if all these events weren't enough, Crown Prince Louis Joseph died at the age of seven. King began to have bouts of clinical depression. Enemies of the monarchy spread rumors that the queen had her own son poisoned. On July 14, 1789, a large group of people marched to the Bastille prison in Paris and took over the administration. The news did not reach the Palace of Versailles until midnight. Asking the king if this was a rebellion, a nobleman replied, No, sir, this is a revolution. A large group marched towards Versailles. Many of the royal family got worried and left Versailles and then the country. But the king said that he would not leave the palace, no matter what. The king and queen remained in the palace with their loyal servants. On November 5, 1789, a group of demonstrators occupied the Palace of Versailles when rumors spread that the royal family had hidden all the city's grain in the palace's warehouses. Early in the morning, the group entered the palace. He slew the queen's guards and they proceeded straight to the king's bedroom. Meanwhile, the crowd gathered in the courtyard of the palace and asked the queen to go out to the balcony. Marie Antoinette went out onto the balcony in her dressing gown and with her two children. The crowd asked him to send the children inside. The queen stood alone on the balcony for about ten minutes, guns pointed at her. He then nodded to the crowd and entered. Some of the crowd admired her courage and shouted long live our queen. The royal family was forcibly taken hostage and taken to the Tuileries Palace in Paris. After that, the French royal family would live in captivity until the abolition of the monarchy in 1792 and their execution. In order to stop this situation and ensure the continuity of the monarchy, the king asked for military assistance from the Russian Tsardom, the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Prussia. Then Prussia declared war on France. The revolutionaries occupied the Tuileries Palace on August 10, 1792, when the Prussian commander, Karl Wilhelm Ferdinand, issued an ultimatum saying that if the royal family were harmed, he would burn all of Paris. De facto monarchy collapsed in France that day. The French Revolution had succeeded. At least for a short time. The deposed King Louis was tried on December 11, and on January 21, 1793, the King of France was executed by guillotine. Hearing the screams of the crowd, Antoniette falls to the ground and faints. After her husband's execution, Antoniette never recovered. She hardly spoke, she was having fainting spells. Soon her children were forcibly taken from her and sent to the Conciergerie prison, where she was imprisoned until her death. Republicans hated Marie Antoinette to death. They called her the cloaked widow, harassing and insulting her whenever they could. Antoinette, whose trial began on October 14, was executed by guillotine on October 16 at 1215. <laughs> Thank you.